Okay, let's take this equation and let's sketch it on a graph. Now right now it's listed, this is listed in function notation. When I'm graphing, I prefer to change it into an equation and two variables. So I'm just going to rewrite it as, instead of f of x, I'm going to say y equals negative 2x plus 7. It means the same thing, just different way to write it. We're going to graph this equation using uh, x and y intercepts. So let's start with our x intercept. Now keep in mind that x intercept is going to be someplace along the x axis of that graph. So at each of those points, the y value is going to be zero. So if I'm going to solve for my x intercept, I'm going to start by setting y equals zero. Because it doesn't matter where it is on that x axis, the y coordinate of all of those points is zero. All right, so I'm going to take my equation and instead of the y, I'm going to put a zero in. So zero equals negative 2x plus 7. And from here, it is just algebra. And now to solve this, I'm going to move the 7 to the other side. So minus 7, minus 7. I now have minus 7 equals negative 2x. Because of course, this plus 7 and that minus 7 cancel each other out. To get that x all by itself, I'm going to take both sides, divide by negative 2, because that's what's in front of my x. And a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So I now have 7 over 2 equals x. That's, I like it the other way around. x equals 7 over 2. So how do we graph 7 halves? You can just divide it. 7 divided by 2 should give me 3.5. So that x-intercept, that is going to cross my x-axis at 3.5. So it's going to cross right about there. Now let's do the y-intercept done much the same way. Although, in this case, when we're looking at the y-intercept, wherever it happens to cross the y-axis, the x-coordinate of each of those points is going to be zero. So what I'm going to do to find my y-intercept is I am going to set x to be zero. I'm going to take my original equation, y equals negative 2, and instead of the x, I'm going to put a 0 in. And I'm going to use algebra to solve the rest of that. Negative 2 times 0 gives me 0 plus 7. My y-intercept happens at 7. If I put that over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There's my y-intercept. All we have to do to finish this off is draw a line. There we go. And the last thing we should do is because this line does continue on forever in each direction, I'm going to put an arrow at each end. It doesn't stop on a dot. It keeps on going. Let's do one more example of that. New equation this time f of x equals 4x minus 3. I like to start by writing it out as an equation in two variables. So instead of the f of x, I'm going to say y equals 4x minus 3. That's the only piece I changed was that f of x turned into a y. Means the same thing, just looks different. So let's start with our x-intercept. And if you remember from before, to find our x-intercept, we always set y to equal 0. So instead of that y, I'm going to put in a 0 equals 4x minus 3. I'm going to use some algebra to finish solving that. I want to get x all by itself. Right now I got a minus 3, so I have to add, that's 7, I have to add 3. Add 3 to that side. I've got 3 equals 4x, because remember, 
that minus 3 and that plus 3 cancel each other out. Next step, I still want to get x all by itself. That 4 is multiplying in, opposite of multiplying is divide. So if I divide both sides by 4, I end up with x equals 3 quarters. Now don't get too hung up on the idea that your answer has to be a whole number. In real world, fractions happen, decimals happen. It's only in the perfect math world that things always equal a nice, neat, perfect number. So let's put that point in. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. 3 quarters, which is the same as 0 0.75. Put it as close as you can. Let's do the same thing now with our y-intercept. Now, just like our like before, now in order to find our y-intercept, we're going to set x to equal zero because it doesn't matter where across the y-axis that x will equal zero at that point. Y equals four, and instead of the x, I'm going to put in my zero. minus 3. y equals 4 times 0 is 0, minus 3. y equals minus 3. All right. Let's mark minus 3 on the y-axis. Zoom in a little bit. 1, 2, 3. There's my point right there. Let's graph it. And there is my graph of my line. Okay, let's move on to the next uh, set of questions. Let's match a graph to a given rate of change in vertical intercept. So here we've got a question where I'm given two pieces of information. Rate of change of one half, so our slope is one over two, and a vertical intercept of six, so our starting point is six. Which of these two graphs fits that best? Well, I'm gonna start with that vertical intercept of six. That's the first place I like to look, because it's the easiest one to figure out. All right, this one here, okay, it's got a vertical in intercept of six. This one over here also has a vertical intercept of six. So there and there. Uh, we can't use that one, because they both cross the uh, y-axis at six. So that one doesn't help us. So let's take a look at this one over here, which is a rate of change of one half. So essentially, I'm looking at m equals one over two. Got a rise of one, run a two. Now, before I even start working about calculating slopes of these other two lines, I want to take a look at the sign of this. This is a positive one over two, which means that our graph is increasing. If it was negative, the graph would be decreasing. So before I even worry about figuring out slope, I look at the graphs. This graph, that's decreasing over time, whereas this one is increasing over time. That means the only graph it could be is that one. Now, that's, that's great. That is our answer. But what if they're both increasing. How do you know which one it is? Well, now we just look at our slope. Now, this one we already knew was negative. So if I drew that little triangle, I've got a rise of negative 2 and a run of 4. In this case, it's an m of minus 2 over 4. If I simplify that, slope equals negative 1 half. That's close. That's not quite what I'm looking for. If I look at graph B, Make that triangle again. Once again, I've got a rise of 2 and a run of 4. In this case, m equals 2 over 4. Simplify it to being 1 over 2. So this is our graph. Let's try that one more time. Which graph has a rate of change of minus 5 and a vertical intercept of 100. So looking at it, I always like to start with that vertical intercept first. Crosses at 100, crosses at 100. Okay, that's not useful to us. 
What we are going to look at is a rate of change. M equals minus 5. Wait a minute. That is negative. So it is decreasing. Only one of these graphs is decreasing. It's got to be this one. Let's solve some word problems involving linear functions. So here we've got a graph that shows the, publish, the cost of publishing a school yearbook. Now the real question is, this is the budget for publishing cost is 4,200. Now it's asking, what is the maximum number of books that can be printed for that cost? Let's zoom in on the graph a little bit right now. So we want to know if your your budget is your cost is about 4200 so we're looking somewhere right about there. And I want to know using this graph how many books can you get for $4200? So I'm going to start off I'm going to put a line here so it's easier to work with. There's my line. Now where does it end up lining up with? I draw a line straight across to there. Now let's take that same line and draw it straight down. There's my answer right there. If we're looking at 25 per spot, that number right there, you we're looking at, I don't know, 185 books, give or take. That's a, a rough guess. It's not going to be exact because we're just looking on the graph. It's going to be pretty close. Let's look at another one here. Here's uh, an electrician, and this is the cost of having an electrician come in and work as opposed to how many hours that electrician worked. So this one, the electrician charges $190. Now if we're looking at 60 per space, that's 180. 190 is going to be right about there someplace. In fact, let's zoom in on that. $190. I would go across here, straight across, and then straight down. It's more than three hours, but less than three and a half. So let's say it's about 3.25 hours.